Hello and welcome to Ben's Edition. Today I'm going to do a project. It's going to be a very interesting project because it's going to save me at least $200. So if you're thinking about replacing your uh, head unit with a aftermarket Android Auto or anything like that with Bluetooth connectivity, please stay tuned as I have a very good solution to uh, connect your head unit your old Mercedes head unit, which is very capable in terms of uh, sound power and other capability, and we can connect it to a Bluetooth. So stay tuned and let's talk about it more. If you are only really after adding Bluetooth connectivity for phone calls and music, this will definitely work for you. So I highly suggest you to follow the video and let's see how easy it is to do this conversion or upgrade. So here I have a Bluetooth, actually two pairs of a Bluetooth connectivity kits. This is a 10 pin or 10 socket connector that is for older Mercedes-Benz, let's say from 1997 to 2002. And this connector, which is a 12 socket connector is for any Mercedes from 2002 and onward. So I show you what head units we're talking about. Okay, here is one sample of the head units we're talking about. We can add Bluetooth connectivity to this type of uh, head units. And also, can also add Bluetooth connectivity to this type of unit, which is uh, which has a bigger screen. And it, I believe, uh, is used on 2004 Plus models. So these are very capable units and they do still have their DVD. They can support your auxiliary as you can see over here and as you can see I have a Bluetooth unit connected and I have powered it up as well and it's working through the auxiliary but uh, that is not what we're going to do today because this type of connection might be a bit noisy and might be uh, less of quality so what we need to do is use Use the auxiliary port behind this head unit to connect that Bluetooth dongle or Bluetooth uh, module to this head unit and solve the problem forever. If you ever try to replace your units to a new aftermarket Android unit, that comes with a kind of cost. The first cost is you have to pay more than $120 plus on eBay and that those units are not high quality units. The screens are not probably the best and they are not durable as Mercedes head units. And the other problem, they probably won't support uh, the optical connections. The other problem with those after aftermarket units is that in terms of sound quality and sound power, they are very low. So you probably also need to add an uh, amplifier to make them really uh, work with your uh, original sound system. Okay, first of all, I want to do a rough check to make sure that this device is in kind of working condition. So I'm gonna connect 12 volt to this uh, to power it up and see if I can find the Bluetooth. So here I have 12 volts connected to this device and as you can see the blue light is lighting now I go ahead on my old phone and scan for new devices and as soon as I do that I can see that car kit over here is added to uh, added as a Bluetooth device so that is probably the device I'm looking for and if I disconnect this by disconnecting one of the poles if I refresh again, stop, scan again, and then I will see that there is no car kit anymore. So at least I have a rough idea that that Bluetooth is uh, recognizable to my devices. So I'll go ahead with uh, the removal of the head unit, old head unit, and adding this Bluetooth functionality to the Mercedes beautiful head unit. Okay, here the first thing I want to do is just, I need to put the gear in a neutral uh, position. So I will have a neutral or D. Uh, so I will have more room over here to play with. And then I can turn off the ignition and focus over here. 
Okay, the first thing we want to do is to, uh, we don't have to remove this uh, gear shifter bezel from here. Gear shifter board up and in that way we can release the cigarette lighter compartment. Slide it out and slide it off and you can easily turn this the other way like that and leave it where it is. Okay, to remove the ashtray uh, compartment, you need to uh, pry behind these tabs over here and pull it up and then it will be easily removed like that. And you can leave it aside like the way I have left this one aside. You don't need to remove all these. So now we need to access the screws, the T20 screws underneath this area over here. So over here I've got the T20 screws, two of them, one on the other side as well. And you need to remove that to be able to remove the aircon control. Here's the second screw. And as soon as you remove those two, so like that, just try from behind and you can leave it like that over here, no problem at all. And then after that, you will see that we already can access two T20 screws for the head unit, but we need to also pry behind this control switchboard over here as well to be able to remove this board as well. So what we need to do is gently pry behind and it's better to pry from this side because this side we have a cup holder and we don't want to damage that. So use your prying tool which is a plastic one and carefully trying not to damage the uh, dashboard. Okay and eventually you can see that from one side you gradually pry from underneath and on the other side too and you can easily remove this board as I have done. Okay. It took some efforts, but finally it's done. Uh, this only has uh, one connector behind it. And by pushing the tab underneath, you can easily release this connector. So it's out of the way now. So the whole head unit is now exposed. The four screws of the head unit are now exposed, two underneath and two up there. So let's take those four screws and begin the process. Okay, now four screws are out and we can slide out the head unit easily. Okay. So here we go, uh, tabs over here to be able to remove these. These are color coded, so I'm not even worried about uh, putting it in the wrong position. Four of them removed. This is the connector, uh, the main connector, and the way you need to remove it, you only need to push this uh, tab over here backward, and that helps you removing the whole connector. Plug over here. This um, uh, empty slot over here was supposed to be this uh, line-in connector, and I removed that from this area over here. And Instead of this lining, I would like to connect my own Bluetooth dangle as it's exactly the same. 
So what we did so far over here, we removed this white connector for the lining that goes to the glove box over there. And I checked and make sure that this is for lining because when I disconnected it, my Bluetooth in the glove box didn't work at all. So I have connected this and this goes, the output of the Bluetooth dongle or module will go to the lining of the head unit. The only thing I need to do over here is to connect these power to power up the module as you can see and I will be all set up. So let's find a good place to get the power from. We need to get this power from somewhere that get disconnected when we switch off the ignition because we don't want to drain the battery when it's in idle position because this is going to draw some amp anyway. Okay, after checking few options, I am getting into this uh, decision that actually the cigarette lighter has the best type of power that I was looking for. So it provides uh, 12 volts power with the ignition on and when you switch your ignition off, that breaks the power to the ashtray. So it's easiest to get the power from a cigarette lighter and make sure you put uh, enough heat shrink secure your connection as as best as you can and I am not going to advise you how to get this secure uh, securely but I highly recommend you to do this the best way you can and make sure you don't leave any kit wire and that because that can cause a firing hazard and that can cause your uh, fuse to blow and that can cause your wiring harness to get damaged so make sure you uh, wire up your powers properly and secure them and make sure you put enough uh, heat shrink and solder them up okay I have roughly connected everything and when I go to lining auxiliary and when I turn on the ignition I want to see that Bluetooth over here and I need to see that to be paired and then I can see that it actually paired now I can see that it actually working And the quality is very high too. So kind of success. I'm going to put back everything. And putting back everything means the reverse of what we did. And I'll show you the final result in few seconds. project is done it didn't take more than two hours and it had no difficulties you need to make sure that you work neatly cross wires as you want I just put my microphone the closest uh, place I even will go and go ahead and push this wire in so I won't even see that this is the microphone for for talking on the phone and everything should be working now so all you need to do you need to put it in the auxiliary mode and connect your phone and there you go got a nice sounding
So now you've got a nice sounding original Mercedes with Bluetooth connectivity and phone that works perfectly with your uh, audio system and you will have your CD changer still functional. This method will save you money and saves you a lot of hassle and this is the perfect audio system of Mercedes and you keep the originality and you will have your Bluetooth if you want to listen to music this is the way to go I believe and this is uh, what I'm going to do on my other CLK 500 this is going to work on any Mercedes from 2002 to 2010 hopefully and I will put the link of what I bought from eBay in the description although I do not not receive any commission from these I just put it as a sample so you can go ahead and buy whatever you want okay guys thanks so much for watching liking subscribing please watch my other videos and enjoy your Mercedes